Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, Heavy Thoughts. Why does so much modern music sound the same? So what made me think of this topic was I was flipping through YouTube and I always try to listen to new things that are coming out. Uh, you know, I have Spotify, so Spotify has new album releases and I'll always just out of curiosity, click on things and listen to a song or two, see if anything catches my interest. I usually do it and Spotify breaks things down into categories. So I'll listen in heavy metal. They also have a rock category. I'll go check that out, check that out and see, you know, what's new. And uh, and I was I also do that sometimes on YouTube. You know, you listen to one video and you see a suggestion for for another video and today I was listening to uh, a bunch of artists on this record label called Frontier Records. For those who don't know, Frontier is a record label that sort of specializes in like a classic 80s sound. They release a lot of albums from artists from the 80s, a lot of the melodic hard rock, not, not really you know any of the extreme metal bands i'm talking more like people like sebastian bach and like bands bands like i don't know if he has a record with frontier he might but bands and artists like that that sort of melodic hard rock melodic metal of the 80s so a lot of the new artists that they have on their label are also very much in that sound very melodic rock melodic hard rock melodic metal whatever you want to call it, clean vocals, uh, clean guitar riffing, keyboards, and a lot of stuff. And so I was sitting down and I was listening to these, they had a playlist of newer bands on their label, and I was listening to like 30 seconds to a minute of one band and just going from one artist to another, to another, to another. And I was, at one, after like the third or fourth one, I said to myself, why do all these bands sound the same? And it got me thinking because I've, I've, I've thought this too, even, even I'm not blaming this record label. I've heard this with a lot of new releases where it just all kind of sounds the same. And it got me thinking, why is that? Well, Part of it, I think, when I was listening to these Frontier songs, I probably listened to like eight artists, maybe seven, eight of these, these artists. And it sounds like part of it is the way things are recorded nowadays. Everybody is recording on computers. And what really, a couple things happen when you record with computers. A lot of people are using sounds from the computer. So a drummer might be playing, but they use, he's playing, but they're taking the sound from the drums and then putting a uh, sampled drum sound over it. And so when I was listening to all these artists, I was like, wow, man, so many of these drums sound the same or very, very similar. And it, it made me think that in the 70s, you know, I, I, right before this video, I just made a video on Led Zeppelin 4. And I'm not sure if that's going to be up before this one. but And I was talking about John Bonham and how John Bonham had a really unique drum sound. Not only did he have a unique drum sound, but on Led Zeppelin 4, the drum sound sort of changes from, from song to song. And nowadays, I think because of computers, everybody kind of starts to sound the same. But back in the 70s, you know, you think about John Bonham's drums, John Bonham or Neil Peart or Bill Bruford or uh, I could go on and on. Uh, Bunny Carlos, Charlie Watts, uh, all these guys, their drums, Phil Rudd, their drums, you could tell them apart from each other. Not only sonically, and, and part of that is, is the way that people recorded back then. People recorded, so this is, a, this is another slight tangent. So, okay, everybody's recording on computers nowadays, which really almost negates uh, a recording studio. Back in the 70s, people went to certain studios for certain sounds. 
So the drums would sound a certain way in this studio and this studio had a certain sound and every studio had its own sound. And so people went there for, the, for that because back then everything was recorded live, meaning not with computers. You know, they put microphones on the drums and they recorded them. And a lot of times they would hang microphones just around the room to get the ambience of the room. And that added to the individuality and uniqueness of the sounds of all the instruments and I think especially of the drums so there's that going on so nowadays with the computers and everybody not really using live drum sounds all the drums start to sound the same I hear this with a lot of like more extreme metal too it just sounds like all the drums are are like the same sound the same snare drum sound uh, the other thing is, is because of computers, everybody is playing everything to a grid. And what I mean by that is, is when people record on computers, a lot of them use programs, the most popular one being Pro Tools, where when you record, there's a grid showing you where the beats are. And you can use programs and, and plugins and stuff that will straighten everything out. Meaning if the drummer is speeding up just a little bit, you click a button and it lines it up to the grid to the one one millionth of a second or that a computer can do. And so everything is just right on. If the song starts at this speed, it is at that, it is consistent at that speed for the whole album. And that to me sucks a lot of life out of these recordings. It makes everything sound the same. Uh, if, I saw a video from uh, the guy's name is Rick Beato. He has an amazing channel. Check him out. He he does all kinds of analysis and on on songs and artists and all kinds of different music related topics. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Rick Beato that did this, where he took a, a uh, John Bonham Led Zeppelin drum track and he showed you how it was sort of speeding up and slowing down a little bit. That's natural. That's human. That's what gives music an ebb and a flow. For instance, the chorus of the song kicks in, everybody get the band gets a little excited, the song gets a little bit faster. These are all sort of subliminal things that you're not really necessarily aware of, but they're affecting how you're reacting to the music. Uh, another example is another uh, YouTube channel where a guy took Jimi Hendrix's uh, the song Axis Bold as Love and he ch showed you how that song really sped up and slowed down. I mean, it was just like, oh, he gritted it all out there and showed you, okay, now with a line, it speeds up, now it drops down, now it speeds up. And, but it sounds amazing. It's an amazing song, an amazing performance. And that to me is, is, is what gives, uh, playing naturally like that, the ebb and the flow, the speeding up, the naturally speeding up and slowing down is what gives those songs, those older songs, the character. And then the bands, uh, they did these things naturally. And so it was sort of the personality of the band, the way the band would speed up or slow down, the way they played on the beat, the way John Bonham would play a drum beat and sort of make it feel like it's you're on the edge of your seat, it's getting a little faster or it's laid back like it's gonna slow down. You know, the, the great drummers and bands from back then, there was this natural sort of interaction between all the instruments and this natural dynamic and flow that when everything is dropped into a computer and straightened out and chopped and cut up, it, uh, it really affects it and it takes the individual personality out of the the music. And uh, the other thing is with computers, you can cut and paste things. And that also takes away where every chorus is the exact same chorus. They sing one chorus, they cut it, they paste it into the second chorus, into the third chorus. And so again, it creates this, even though an artist in the 70s might have sang it, tried to sing it exactly the same way, you never do anything exactly the same way twice. If I tried to say the same sentence five times in a row exactly the same way, there would be microscopic, subliminal, subconscious differences between the way I did it every single time. And I really think that the listener, their ear, their brain is perceiving this, even if they're not perceiving it on a conscious level, they're hearing these subtle, slight, variations and that's what makes it interesting and unique and 
dynamic and have a flow and a change to it. Uh, and then this also affects the guitar sounds too. When I was listening to all these different bands, it was like, wow, man, the guitars, you know, I mean, there was a little bit of a difference between the various sounds, but it wasn't like, again, I keep coming back to the 70s, where you could hear, G if you lined up Jimmy Page next to Eric Clapton, next to Jimi Hendrix, next to Tony Iommi, next to Richie Blackmore, all these guys had really different guitar sounds. You could pick them out, you know, with a couple seconds. That's Blackmore, you know, that's Shanker. And that is because, again, they were recording things live and they were using real amplifiers and they were miking these amps. And even though all these guys were using Marshall amplifiers and stuff, every amplifier is going to be a little different. It's going to be aged a little different. The circuits are going to be burned in a little different. The tubes are going to be burned in at a different life stage of the tubes. And all these things in the room ambience of where they're recording just add, adds to the different uh, sounds that you hear from all those early recordings. And it really gets lost in a lot of modern recordings where the guitars all kind of sound the same, where the drums all sound the same. And the other thing now, and, and you know what, I get it. There's, there isn't a budget anymore. Ever since illegal downloading and when artists were unable to sell a lot of records, physical product, budgets went way down. Back in the day, a band would drop, a big band could spend half a million dollars recording an album, <laughs> you know, so they could afford to go. And I remember re reading an interview with Nickel McBrain and he said like, you know, on one of their like somewhere in time, like he literally spent an entire week just getting a snare drum sound. You know, he had his drum tech and whatever drum company he endorses, you know, they have like a hundred different snare drums and they just sat there for a week trying them all out. Nobody can afford to do that anymore. It's too expensive. Nobody has the budget because nobody, physical media sales have dropped. So everybody has to sort of cut corners and that's where they do this with computers. Uh, so in a lot of ways, I don't blame the bands. They, they can't, they don't have the money and the time to experiment the way they used to. But a lot of albums nowadays, it's like one guitar sound through the whole thing, one drum sound through the whole thing, one vocal sound through the whole thing. And it's just like one color, one texture through the whole thing. And when you listen back to older records, there was a lot more going on between the individual songs. You may not even realize it, but I go back to Led Zeppelin IV. Listen to the guitar sounds in Led Zeppelin IV. It changes on almost every song. I was listening to uh, Black Sabbath Volume IV because they just put out this box set for it. And that's sort of the same way. There's different guitar tones and textures going on. There's different things going on. And it adds to the feeling of variety and, and different things being different. So I think all those things are some of the reasons why a lot of the people, a lot of bands sound the same now. And another thing might be that it's, it's, it's very hard to find a lot of singers. Uh, there's not a lot of singers that I hear anymore, the newer type singers that I'm just like, whoa, like this is, wow, this guy is really different. And you know, part of that is, is just as time has passed on, like Robert Plant comes out and is like, well, I've never heard anybody sing that high before. Well, guess what? There's been a lot of people since then that sing up in that range. It's not unique anymore. Uh, or, uh, you know, if you, you hear somebody with a Rod Stewart, oh, I never heard somebody with a raspy voice like that before. Well, now there's a tons of singers that sing that sing like that so it's it's it, it's something that is just as time has gone on it's 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 hard to stand out and and jump out anymore because so many things have been done already but it is kind of a shame that in my opinion computers and the way things are recorded modern recording methods uh, have sort of made everything really bland and samey, which is, uh, I know that's not a word, samey. Uh, <laughs> and it's sort of taken some of the, uh, a lot of the, sucked a lot of the life 
out of a lot of modern recordings. Uh, the last thing I'll throw in there is the loudness wars and dynamic range. If you haven't seen my video on this, I made a video not long ago, go watch that video. When bands squash and take all the dynamics out of a recording, it takes the air out around it and everything gets real claustrophobic and it just lacks any kind of spaciousness or warmth. Everything gets plastered, flat, dry. There's just no breathing room between the instruments and that also makes everything sound real plastered and just real flat, you know, it, 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 it doesn't add to the dynamics, it takes all the dynamics out of the recording where you've got some, you know, here Led Zeppelin IV, I keep bringing it up, you've got Going to California and the Battle of Evermore, which are really mellow and soft, and you got these heavy rockers like Black Dog, Rock and Roll, you know, that then the intensity level gets driven up and this crushing and taking away all the dynamics sort of takes that away from the recordings, so. All right, so uh, there you go. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you feel the same way? Am I just an old man that's uh, sitting on my porch and like these kids today with their recordings, you know, why can't they just mic a snare drum like they used to in the 70s? <laughs> you know, maybe that's what it is. You know, maybe I'm just getting old and I just don't, I just don't get it. And, and that's not to say that there aren't good recordings that come out nowadays. Of course there are. Uh, but I just find that there's just a lot of stuff that just sounds very flat and very same, samey. There's my new word for the video, samey to me. Uh, so let me know what you think. Do you feel the same way that a lot of, uh, about a lot of modern recordings? Uh, how do you feel about modern stuff? What jumps out at you? What doesn't jump out at you? Why do you think that uh, why do you feel the way that you feel? So let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. And until we see you again, rock hard, ride free.